Hi, my name is Ethan Cottingham and I'm a mechanical engineer at Power Engineering and Manufacturing. Today, I'm going to show you how to install our new Direct Connect Wireless Remote Control Electronic Towing System. Before we go to a real installation on the truck, we're going to use this old control station to better illustrate the install of the actuator. Um, different control stations from different manufacturers will vary, um, but we're going to show the measurements that you need to take to get the actuator installed properly. Give you a brief overview of the system that we'll be installing today. We have a radio embedded actuator and a radio embedded handheld. This means that there is not an external box controlling the communication between these two. Um, the actuator is capable of pushing 100 pounds of force, which means it can break the linkages free of any corrosion, rust buildup, snow, anything like that. By installing this system, you have variable speed control with the handheld by turning your wrist. So for example, if you put that on the winch function, you're controlling the speed of the winch and the speed at which the cable is pulling on your vehicle. So to start out the install, we want to note that this is an upside down older unit. Um, this is to make the demonstration more clear and to give an idea of what measurements to take when you're installing your bracketry. Um, so the first thing when you're underneath the truck is you want to make sure that you have at least 17 inches of free space available. Obviously on this unit we have a lot of free space, but just take that into consideration. Um, then the next thing you're going to do is determine where you want your mounting tab. In the kit you get two of them, you get four carriage bolts, lock washers, and nuts for them. We generally try to put the pivot rod closer to the outside of the control station. Um, and you want the center of the pivot rod hole to be two inches from the linkage itself. And that gets us right about in that area. Um, we've already pre-drilled these holes, but at this point when you would set it here, um, you'd measure, mark the center of your holes, and you want to drill 5 ace holes um, in both sides. Once that is installed, um, you need to drill holes on the opposite side, and you want it to be directly across from it, so when you install the pivot rod, it is parallel, or excuse me, perpendicular with the linkages. So, the reference measurement that we will take will be right here. Um, and we're at 14 and 3 quarter of an inch. So we will then come to the other side, look at our 14 and 3 quarter, we're right there, and then again measure your 2 inches from the linkage to the center of your pivot rod hole. So once you have these, uh, the mounting tabs snugged up, you want to Verify the holes that you drilled. Make sure, yep, we have two inches there, two inches. Once we've verified that the pivot rod is in the correct location, we need to torque the carriage bolt nuts, and we do this to 30 foot-pounds. And the purpose is that when the actuator is pushing on the pivot rod, it cannot move. Once those are torqued, the next step is to put the retaining ring on the end of the pivot rod, and you're doing it in a way that you still have room on the other side um, for the other retaining ring um, once you're ready to put that on. And so the next step is to install the C-bracket. You have the C-bracket, and then you have two U-bolt, four lock washers, and four nuts for this. So you've got the hardware with it. Um, this is a little bit easier to do underneath the truck because you can simply hang the U-bolts. And then the C-bracket, you want to make sure that the open side is facing the pivot rod. That's this direction. You need to make sure that your lock washer is on there. And then your nut. Then lightly thread that down. 
other side. Again, this is easier to do underneath the truck because the U-bolt is just hanging there. And then we'll go and install the other one. So we want to make sure that we are um, 16 and 3 quarter inches from the center of the pivot rod to the back of the C bracket, so as we're showing here. So once you have that set, you can then go ahead and evenly tighten the bolts. And again, just like the mounting tabs, we want to be making sure that this cannot move on the shaft. The actuator will be pushing this way, and you don't want it to slide on the linkage. Now our next step is to prep the actuator for installation, and there's a couple parts that we need to install first. In the kit, you get two plastic washers, you have a jam nut, and then the clevis with the pin. First, what we're going to do is we're going to thread the jam nut pretty much all the way to the end of the threads on the push rod. Then you can thread the clevis on. We're threading that up to the jam nut. And so the, the clevis and the nut are both 9 16 So then you can grab your 9 16 wrench and then tighten that simply by squeezing there and you're securing that because just like the mounting tabs and the C bracket this cannot move. Now that we have the jam nut secured to the clevis on the push rod we can slide the pivot rod out and slide the actuator on. You want to do this in a way to where the wires are facing the ground. Um, our control station here is upside down so this facing up, but it would be the ground. Um, next, what you want to do is move the actuator by hand outwards and line this up. What you want to do is you want to double check that your measurement from the back of the C bracket to the center of the pivot rod is correct and that the actuator is in the middle of its stroke. So you can see there roughly about the center. Once you get this generally lined up, um, you need to install the plastic washers. This is preventing corrosion in between here and to make sure that the pin stays loose so it can move around freely. Um, to aid in lining those up, it's helpful to have a screwdriver um, to kind of wobble around in there, but we're making do. Ooh, we got lucky there. You got your pin in, the plastic washers are in, um, then you can install the other retaining ring on the opposite side of the pivot rod. So a couple things to note. You need to make sure that your carriage bolt nuts are torqued to 30 foot-pounds. Make sure that the U-bolts are torqued to 5 foot-pounds. And you want to make sure that your jam nut is secured to the clevis, so it cannot move. The purpose of measuring the two inches from the linkage to the center of the pivot rod is to make sure that you have your actuator parallel to the linkages. So you're pushing directly into it. You're not pushing down, you're not pulling up and bending the linkage. And that'll help with the longevity of the actuator on the assembly. Once you've verified that the bolts are torqued, this is secured. Final step of the installation is to wire the actuator or actuators if you are installing multiple. There are some important considerations to take into account when performing this step. First is to note that red must be connected to power, black must be connected to ground. Reversing polarity anywhere in the actuator will result in the actuator not powering on or operating correctly. 
Secondly, the actuator accepts either 12 volt or 24 volt source and it can be wired directly to the battery or downstream of the power on relays. Thirdly, the wire gauge is to be determined by the installer depending on the length of wire required to reach the power source. PEM recommends using 18 gauge wire and provides a connector along with two feet of wire to splice into the common power source. Finally, and potentially the most important consideration, the actuators should have a single 10 amp fuse spliced into the red power wire. This is true whether or not there is a single actuator being used or up to six actuators. There needs to be a 10 amp fuse spliced into the common power wire. PEM recommends putting the fuse in an accessible location that is not exposed to the elements. The reason we use a 10 amp fuse is in the event the operator actuates two functions at the same time. Additionally, the reason we use a 10 amp fuse is that without conditions such as rust, ice, snow buildup, or sticky valves, an actuator typically draws two or three amps. However, when these conditions do exist, the actuator can power up to 100 pounds of force to break through the buildup and can draw up to five amps, which results the need for the 10 amp fuse. Now, once you have your actuator all wired up, installed, um, we're going to show you the operation of it. We're just using a power pack here to, to show that. Um, the actuator is already synchronized and calibrated. Please go look at our other video for the instructions on that. Um, but we just wanted to go over the general operation and kind of what's actually happening here. So when you just hold the button and it's level, it see it, it barely moves there. And then you're completely controlling the position of that. And then that's an important feature too, is it's powering itself back. It is not relying on the spring to simply pull it back. It's actually pushing it, so if anything gets in the way of that, it's going to break through that. By being able to meter the position of this linkage, you're controlling the hydraulic flow in the valve, so you can precisely control your winch speed by simply turning your wrist. The angle determines the movement. That brings it back, in addition to letting off of the button, that brings it back. We call this powered neutral, and this is so if anything is blocking the linkage, it will work to break through that, and this is a major safety feature. For example, if you are winching the vehicle up and something were to get jammed, um, you don't want the vehicle to continue moving forward or cause a dangerous situation. So you want that winch to stop when you want it to stop. And we have multiple safety features to make sure that that happens. To improve your tow operation, visit Power Engineering and Manufacturing's website. Send us an email or give us a call and we'll get you in touch with an authorized Direct Connect dealer. For more information on Direct Connect, be sure to check out our other videos on PEMS Direct Connect channel. Thanks for watching.